Bienvenue à tous à cette nouvelle édition de Télé Images. Je suis Valérie Yosselli. Bienvenue à ces millions d'éternautes branchés sur la toile à travers le monde. Bienvenue aussi à ces amis des spectateurs qui, du côté de la zone métropolitaine de New York, sont branchés sur les différents réseaux câblés ou pas ces émissions. Ce magazine télévisé d'aujourd'hui, tout de go en commençant, va parler de ce qui a un petit peu marqué l'actualité cette semaine. Et cette semaine, c'est déjà hier que l'actualité a été marquée du côté de la Floride par la présence de l'ancien sénateur élu Guy Philippe devant ses juges dans les tribunaux en Floride. Guy Philippe, aujourd'hui, euh, du moins hier, a plaidé coupable cette fois-ci. Si la dernière fois, se présentant devant les tribunaux, il a plaidé non coupable cette fois-ci, la plaidoirie a été différente. Et ce matin, nous avons eu le plaisir, la chance d'avoir en ligne téléphonique l'avocate de Guy Philippe, Madame Zelka Bouzanik. Avec elle, sur les lignes de téléphone de Téléimage, nous allons lui dire bienvenue et lui parler, lui poser quelques questions justement concernant cette actualité qui se développe du côté de la Floride où l'ancien sénateur Guy Philippe hier a donc plaidé coupable cette fois-ci. Welcome and thank you for being part of this show via phone line. Hi, hi everybody and thank you for having me. Thank you again. How did it go yesterday in court with your client, Mr. Guy Philippe? How was your client physically and mentally? He, everything went according to the plan. Uh, we didn't have any issues. Um, he was, you know, obviously in good spirit and um, was ready to deal with the issues and uh, pled guilty to one of the counts in the indictment. Um, and we basically, according to the plea agreement, Um, the calls for the dismissal of the other two counts, that's going to happen at the sentencing. So everything went as we planned. There were no issues at all. Okay, very good. And he was uh, he was still a strong man, smiling. He was oh. fine with everything. Uh, of course, Mr. Philippe is a strong person, and uh, he's a soldier, so he's always going to be strong. <laughs> Something like this can't uh, bring him down. Was his wife around, or was she, at the, she was at the courtroom? Uh, no, his wife does not live in Florida, and uh, we didn't think it was uh, that big of a, a deal for her to be there for the plea because it, nothing really happens at the time of the plea. Um, it's the sentencing that we would usually have mm -hmm. um, the family to come to. Now tell us, why a guilty plea? As we know previously, your client, Mr. Guy Philippe, had pled not guilty. Why? What happened here? Why did you guys change your mind? Why a guilty plea yesterday? Well, in every single case, we always plea not guilty at the beginning of the arraignment. No, you know, this is not just Mr. Philippe's case. Anytime we have a client uh, with a federal case at the arraignment, you always plea not guilty. Then you look at whatever they have, you know, whatever evidence or discovery uh, is presented. And then you also consider uh, the defense witnesses and any um, evidence that you as a defense can, can present. And then you determine whether it's, you know, Uh, whether you're going to go to trial or whether your client should consider a plea. Uh, sometimes a plea is not a good offer and it doesn't make sense, and in some cases a uh, plea makes sense. What happened in this case, and, you know, uh, with a caveat of this, this being an open case so I can't get into the details, but we reviewed the evidence, and the evidence um, is from 1999 to 2005, and... Um, there were certain reasons why we made a decision that it was in the best interest for Mr. Philippe to plead guilty. Aside from that, um, the government offered him a very good deal uh, to plead to the money laundering count and dismiss the mm -hmm. drug trafficking count. Um, Mr. Philippe's exposure was up to life in prison if mm. he was to get convicted uh, on the drug trafficking count, and that is a very a uh, big risk for him and for anybody in the situation that he was in. And once the government approaches you and tells you that they're willing to dismiss that count if he pleads to the money laundering, you know, any attorney would obviously look at that and consider that to be a very, very good offer. Um, and I think, you know, without talking numbers and what he's going to get, because we don't know until the judge makes that decision on the sentencing date, But we kind of have an idea of what the sentencing guidelines will be, and okay. the guidelines that he will be in are way lower than what he's exposed to if you know he was to plead to the drug trafficking, and that's why okay. he made that decision. Um, pleading to the drug trafficking would have been a no-no, and we would, you know, not do that because there is a potential for life. With this mm. plea that happened yesterday, 
uh, the life sentence was taken off the table, and that was a big victory, and it made sense for us as the attorneys to recommend to our client uh, to plead guilty. Understood. Your client, Mr. Guy Philippe, is now facing one count, which is the, the accusation of money laundering. Now, did the court come up with any evidence, any, any witnesses for the other counts of accusation? No. If we had gone to trial, the government would have to present evidence and witnesses <clears throat> and whatever they had to prove you know, the charges against Mr. Philippe. Because he decided to take the deal that the government offered, they're not say, okay, in exchange for you guys not presenting your witnesses and your evidence and doing all of that, um, you know, you're going to give us the plea that we agreed on and he's going to plead guilty and all that trial stuff kind of gets taken off the table. Okay, very well. But you would agree with us that if you were sure, if you had the assurance that your, your client was not guilty, you on the defense side, you would have proceed with uh, the trial and actually won the trial for your client. Do you agree with that? How do you say, what do you respond to this? Well, this is my personal opinion on any case. Um, I can feel very strongly about the client's um, good case and the fact that we have a good chance in trial. I can never guarantee to a client what's going to happen in trial. Obviously, <clears throat> if you go to trial, it's up to the 12 jurors in the community. In this case, it would be 12 jurors who live in Miami-Dade County to look at Mr. Philippe and decide whether he is guilty or not. And no matter how great of an attorney you have and no matter how great your case is, there's always a risk because it's up to 12 people in the community to make a decision as to what's going to happen to your life. So that is a great risk. Um, I always felt strongly about Mr. Philippe, and I continue to feel strongly about certain things and that I can't discuss because it's an open case. Mm -hmm. I respect Mr. Philippe, um, and, you know, I... It was a difficult decision to make, uh, but at the end of the day, I had to put my personal feelings aside and um, some other things aside and think about what's in the best interest of the client. Is it taking a guaranteed deal um, that calls for the sentencing guidelines to be, you know, around nine years or so, or mm -hmm. is it going to trial and if somebody... I mean, eventually is facing is, life. <laughs> yeah, so... You know, it is what it is, and uh, okay. I, I'm sure it's uh, it's difficult for people to understand, and I wish I could elaborate more, but at the same time, because it's an open case, I can't really discuss um, anything about the facts or the witnesses or any of that uh, stuff right now. Okay, very well. Now, from life sentencing that he was facing, and he actually made a deal not to have that sentence, now he's facing, what, nine years or less than that? Do you know? Well... Uh, again, you know, we are not going to know what the sentence is until July. Until, okay. um, and I can't speculate, and I don't want to speculate, but um, the judge will make that decision. They usually follow what's called the sentencing guidelines, um, okay. and we have certain numbers and ways we calculate guidelines. And at this point, I think the government and the defense are both going to recommend a certain sentence, which is in the plea agreement, and that's 108 months, which is nine years. Okay. Um, so it's up to the judge to either follow that recommendation or make her own decision as to what the appropriate sentence will be. She doesn't have to follow our recommendation. Um, but we'll see what the guidelines come out to, and if we were right, and if the guidelines are in that range, then you know the judge will deal with the guidelines and uh, make the appropriate sentence, whatever she feels the appropriate sentence is, and, and rule. Uh, but aside from that, um, after Mr. Philippe is sentenced um, in July, then the Bureau of Prisons will calculate the sentence and give him the appropriate reductions uh, based on gain time and good behavior. Okay, very well. Now, your client served his time. After his time, does he go back to Haiti? Will he be deported to Haiti? Um, Mr. Philippe is not a citizen or a resident of the United States, and he doesn't have any um, status in the United States, so okay. we expect that he will be um, brought back to Haiti. Now, another question that comes to mind, does the District Court of Miami has the right now to go after his, uh, his assets? Do you think that the government will go after his properties, his house, and assets? Uh, you know, it's, anything is possible. It's, it's in the plea agreement that the government can uh, go after, you know, some assets or a personal, get a personal judgment against them for certain 
uh, amount, and that's in the plea agreement. Um, at the sentencing, the judge will pronounce the sentence and uh, pronounce if there is a judgment against him. So at this time, it's it's in the plea agreement, but it's not final until the sentencing. Well, we're not going to keep you long. We know your time is very precious. And again, thank you for allowing us to, to ask you a few questions on your precious time. But now this question is very important. I'm sure this question is making a buzz all around in the Haitian community here in the States and, of course, in Haiti as well. While we're talking here today, I'm sure now um, in Haiti at the present time, this is making the headlines. Now, the question is, is it true Attorney Bolzanik, that your client, Mr. Guy Philippe, had made a deal with the District Court of Miami to give names of government, actual government officials involved in drug trafficking. There is even a list out uh, circulating in the community. Is it true or is it a rumor? That's absolutely not true. There is absolutely no agreement in place at this time for him to cooperate. So the plea agreement that he made with the government is all over the Internet. It's online. I'm sure people can read it. And if you read closely, there is no uh, agreement that calls for his cooperation. Um, and I've heard the rumors myself. They're just simply not true. Okay, very well. Attorney Zerka Bozenik, thank you very much for allowing us in your precious time to ask you a few questions about your client, Mr. Guy Philippe. Good luck, and again, thank you very much. Thank you very much.